Hello, I'm Kleda Tani and I'm Doctor of Physical Therapy and today we are going to talk about Parkinson's disease rehabilitation. So what is Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative progressive disease, which means that it's a, pro a disease that is changing uh, during the years and it's, uh, that's called neurodegenerative. Uh, it's a syndrome of hypokinating and hypertonic um, pathology, so it means that the patient has hypertonus, uh, so it means that it has uh, pathological hypertonus, like rigidity, and hypokinesis, which means that he doesn't have a lot of movement. Uh, Parkinson's disease is the primary Parkinson, which means that the dopamine is below the norm. And that happens because there is a degeneration of dopaminergic molecules in the substantia nigra, and these molecules produce dopamine, which helps with the mobility of the patient. So when we have degeneration of the dopaminergic molecules, then you don't have a lot of dopamine, so the mobility changes. There are four symptoms of Parkinson's disease, of uh, the biggest uh, norm, uh, symptoms that we know. Uh, it's tremor at rest, uh, which tremor is a rhythmic shaking, and we will explain it. Uh, it's hypokinesia, bradykinesia, and akinesia, rigidity, and postural imbalance problems, which are mostly uh, later symptoms of the, of the disease. Uh, but also we don't have only Parkinson's disease, but also we have Parkinson's syndrome. And Parkinson's syndrome is a secondary Parkinson, and normally it's, it's different from Parkinson's disease because the, etio the etiology of the syndrome is different. We have different etiologies of the Parkinson's syndrome. It can be vascular etiology, post-traumatic head injuries, that can, um, uh, that, that can be uh, trauma at the substantia nigra and differences at the dopamine. Uh, and also it can be intoxication of manganese or chemical, different chemicals intoxication that can change our dopamine in our bodies so we can, uh, so a patient can have Parkinson's syndrome and also sometimes it's uh, age related. So as a patient gets older, then he can have a syn Parkinson's syndrome, but it's not a genetic Parkinson's disease. It's different from the Parkinson's disease and also from the Parkinson's syndrome, the, the patient doesn't have all the um, four symptoms as we said above. The symptoms are different and um, they are more symmetric than the Parkinson's disease. So we are going to talk, to talk about the symptoms, especially about the four symptoms and explain, to, and explain them. Uh, we have, first of all, we have a poverty in movement. As we said, Parkinson's disease is hypertonic hypokinetic syndrome, which means that you don't have spontaneous movement and the patient has poverty in movement. It's typical to have three different symptoms like hypokinesia, akinesia, or bradykinesia. Hypokinesia is the reduction of the amplitude of the motion, so the motion, it, it doesn't have a big amplitude. Bradykinesia is a decrease of the movement speed and akinesia is completely stillness and no movement at all. How you can test it is by uh, telling your patient to do this uh, movement and if you see that the amplitude of the movement is normal and it's big but the speed is different or it's slowing then this means that you have the patient has bradykinesia but if you can see that the speed is okay the same but you can see that the amplitude of the movement is changing that this means that uh, the patient has hypokinesia but if you can see that the patient doesn't move at all at, at one point, that means that there is akinesia. Also, another problem is freezing. Uh, it's very typical in Parkinson's disease. Uh, you could see uh, an instant and unpredictable immobility of the patient. Uh, this happens while the patient is walking. You can see that he stops walking and he cannot move forward anymore. And this can happen when the environment changes. So, which means like if he is walking in the street and a car is, is coming forward and he stops and he cannot move at all, or there is a change in the, um, in the environment, in uh, the... Uh, maybe a sound, different sounds of the environment. So this type of changes can, uh, uh, can produce freezing and the patient stops and is, he's unable to move for so several minutes. Then we have uh, bloody teleokinesis. It's a type um, of uh, symptom which means that the target movements are stopped before reaching the target. 
So the typical um, way of uh, testing it is if you say to the patient to do the finger nose test, you could see that the patient starts doing it and then he stops, he freezes. He doesn't go at all at the target intended, intended target. So this means that the target movement is stopped before the target, uh, in, the intended target. And also we can see that the mobility of the limbs is decreased because as we said before, the patient has a hypokinesia. So it means that the, um, the uh, speed is decreased. Also, the amplitude of the movement of the limbs is decreased. So you can see that the patient doesn't have any synergy at the upper extremities or lower extremities while walking or uh, changing his post position. Rigidity, it's a, a typical pathological hypertonus and it's very known as the Parkinson's disease. Rigidity, it's, uh, it has a plastic character, which means um, uh, that you have a hypertonus of agonist and antagonist. Uh, in uh, different movements of the body, uh, it, which is not dependent from the speed of the movement, you could see that there is a hypertonus and the patient, you, can, you could feel the hypertonus and the patient is unable to, to do any movement at all. So while you are testing the flexion and extension of the elbow, of the, sorry, of the um, hand, you could feel that while you're doing the flexion or while you're doing the extension, the, the, there is a pathological hypertonus which, uh, which doesn't let you do the, any uh, passive movement with the patient. So uh, that's why it's, call, it, it's called that it has a plastic character. You could see, you could feel that there is a, a difficulty doing the movement uh, in every direction. And this is rigidity. Uh, typical for Parkinson's disease is uh, micrography, so the patient writes with smaller characters. It's typical he starts with normal characters and in the end the characters of the letters are, uh, are getting smaller and smaller. And this is one of the symptoms that the patients understand that they have Parkinson's disease because when they are writing they understand that there is a change in their writing. Also, the patients with Parkinson's disease have hypomimia, and hypomimia is so when the patient is not able to show emotions with his uh, facial expressions because the mimic, uh, the facial muscles of, and the mimic is not uh, activated a lot, as we said that the patient has hypokinesia. Uh, we have hypophonia, so the, the speech is monotonous without any melody and the patient has a very low voice while he's talking. And this type of symptoms, uh, it's typical that the patient with a, a lot of years of Parkinson's disease has a depression and uh, differences in his humor. Uh, also, we said that uh, one of the typical symptoms of Parkinson's is the tremor at rest. Uh, di the difference with the cerebellar disorders uh, here it means that the Parkinson, the, the patient with Parkinson's disease, while he's uh, standing or not doing anything, he's having a dress, he's having a tremor. But while he's moving, the tremor is is a completely uh, it completely disappears. Typical tremor is in the hands and in the limbs or in the f on the foot. So the patient has distal the distal part of the body have tremor. Uh, it, the tremor increases when the patient uh, is um, stressed, uh, he's trying to concentrate on something, or while he's walking and uh, the, sometimes the, uh, and he's very stressed because of the environment, then you could see that the tremor is increased. Uh, but while the patient is sleeping, the tremor disappears. And the last ones are the postural difficulties. Uh, we say that the postural difficulties are part or are symptoms that are shown in, um, in, in a patient that has a lot of years with Parkinson's disease, uh, in the later years of the disease. So you could see that the patient has a typical flexed posture. Uh, his head is bent forward, his elbows are flexed, his limbs are flexed, and he's completely in a flexed position. His um, uh, body and trunk is flexed forward also. So uh, this means uh, that he has an uncertainty in walking and standing. These are the typical problem of uh, Parkinson's disease. The, the patient, uh, this typical while he is walking, that he's making steps before he starts walking and steps before stopping uh, walking. And sometimes he increases the speed uh, when he's changing positions 
or uh, when he he wants to stop walking or he when he, they, they are changing environment like they are going from one room to another room you could see that they are speeding their walk they're stopping they can while they want to rotate they're speeding their walk and they don't have a lot of balance while working walking and this is a, a big problem for them uh, so what you are going to do as a physical therapist or occupational therapist for a patient with Parkinson's disease, it depends a lot from the symptoms that the patient has. Uh, but if the patient has all of the symptoms above, then your work is very uh, necessary for them. So the main purpose of the therapy is prevention of uh, uh, contractors of joints. So the fact that the patient has rigidity and uh, hyp hypokinesia and uh, the movement is slow, a lot of times if the patient doesn't do a lot of physiotherapy or occupation therapy, you could see that the limbs are fro frozen in a way and they are contracted. So if you have to to prevent any contractors of the joints with passive movements, so techniques, my fascia techniques and different, uh, uh, different other techniques. Also, you have to prevent loss of muscle tone because of, even though the patient has rigidity, doesn't mean that you have hypertonus because of the patient is not, um, he's not activating the muscles in the way that they should be activated. You could sometimes have a loss of muscle strength. Also, we have to prevent exacerbation of the disease and also social isolation uh, because of the patient's maybe um, depression or um, difference in humor, as we said above. So, uh, as the sorry, as the physical therapist or occupational therapist, you can use different techniques to slow and to lower the rigidity. Uh, how you can change rigidity is by imp uh, doing active uh, movements, rhythmic movements, and big and fast movements. So the patient will have a rhythm to do the movement. Like if you want to do the flexion of the elbow, you have to say to the patient that the flexion should be maximum flexion range of motion. So the patient will see the, the movement is big, so he will try to do a big movement and change, and so the rigidity will get lower and lower and uh, will, it will disappear in a way. Uh, also, my fascial techniques and maybe relaxation and stretching of the muscle is very good for relaxing the rigidity at the moment of therapy. Sometimes uh, techniques for um, lowering the rigidity is autotherapy and exercises in front of the mirror because the patient, while he's, uh, he's seeing himself in front of the mirror, it's easier for him to do the exercises and also he's motivated to do the exercises. Some strategy, strategies of doing exercises is divide the exercise in sections and sequences. So uh, difficult exercises like uh, um, standing in one uh, foot, squatting, uh, standing from the chair and uh, standing up or uh, climbing stairs, maybe it will be difficult for the patient. So if you, if you divide every exercise in sequences, then you can, uh, it will be easier for the patient to understand the exercise and to do the exercise afterwards. And then you can combine all of the sequences together so the patient can do a squat from the beginning to the end and some repetitions of them. Also, there are some tricks you can uh, use to lower the tremor for the patient. Uh, the, the tricks that the patient can do is if uh, he's putting his hand in the pocket or he's um, having something in his hands while he's walking, then uh, it's an active movement for the patient. So the, the tremor will disappear in a way. Uh, very important for us as physical therapists is to improve the posture of the patient, especially as we said that the patient has a lot of postural problems like the, flex, the, the uh, flexed trunk, the um, flexed uh, limbs, and problems with gait problems that the patient has. So you have to use a lot of uh, mobilization, myofascial techniques to, to relax the fascias, to relax the muscles, to relax the rigidity, and also have to use a lot of balance exercises to, uh, to educate the patient how to walk, how to stand, uh, how to change positions without, um, uh, without any traumas or falls. Uh, so you use a lot of tractions, mobilizations, uh, techniques that you can relax 
any muscles, fascias and joints, and then try to exercise the, the ideal posture for the patient. So he will, uh, in a way, he will not be in a flex position, but he will change his position. There are also various strategies for gait, especially for, uh, and to prevent freezing while walking. Typically known strategy is a cane with a light. There are special canes for Parkinson's disease. So it means that uh, while the patient is walking with a cane, there is a, a laser light in front of him. So he will think that he has to, while he's walking, he has to um, overcome this light in a way. So this is an information for the patient to, to, to make a step forward. Uh, it's very important for Parkinson's disease patient to have a stimulation while walking. Uh, the stimulation can be a verbal stimulation, can be a rhythmic stimulation like music, or uh, if the patient sometimes can um, rhythmic rhythmically count the steps while walking, because any rhythm uh, for Parkinson's disease patients is very uh, important to do the exercises and to have motivation for the exercise. It's easier for them to walk when they have a rhythm while they're walking. So, or sometimes you can ask the patient to slightly hit his leg while he's walking so he can prevent the freezing because this is a stimulation and a rhythm for him to walk. Uh, maybe sometimes it's easier for the patient to see and to watch the place where he's putting his legs. So it's also a verbal information for him. Uh, or sometimes when he freezes, a good idea is to do a step back and then a step forward, also another trick. Depends from the patient uh, and which trick or which strategy is better for him or her. Uh, patients with uh, Parkinson's disease are very good at group exercises because they get very motivated while they're doing the exercises. They see each other and they get motivation. And also group exercises are mostly aerobic exercises and rhythmic exercises. So uh, they are very uh, easy for them to maintain and to concentrate while they have a group uh, to work with. Um, sports activities are very good for patients with Parkinson's disease, like walking, swimming, uh, golf, uh, and uh, importantly, it's it, it has been shown that um, dancing and tango it's also uh, very uh, uh, very important, and uh, it has very good references for uh, treatment for pa patients with Parkinson's disease because the fact that tango and dancing has a rhythm. The patient, um, in a way, um, relaxes more, so uh, he doesn't have that hypokinesia and freezing and flexion of the body, but he starts uh, relaxing and uh, uh, the range of motion changes for the patient. Uh, spa treatment and balneotherapy, it's um, a treatment for um, the well-being of the patient. We can see that a lot of patients after balneotherapy and spa treatment have a lot of uh, differences and they are... Uh, they, they feel better in a way. Uh, and in this way, we, we can uh, finish our lecture for today. And thank you very much for our attention. And we will see you at the next lecture.